Number seven ministries. The spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news. In Strong's H 3374, we have the Hebrew word which means Yura. It means fear, terror, fearing. Fear, terror, awesome or terrifying thing. An object causing fear. Fear of God, respect, reverence, piety, and revered. Now this is the word fear in a positive uh, meaning, a positive intention, and a blessed word. And all children need to uh, learn or discover this fear in order to continue to follow Jesus Christ. And I want to tell you that Jesus feared his Father in heaven. And Jesus feared his Father in heaven so much that he was able to take on the cross. He feared his Father so much that he was able to obey his Father at the consequences of being disrespected, misunderstood, used and abused by the hands of man. And we as Christians need to embrace that same pattern in order to develop in our full potential that God has in store for all of his children. Now, the word fear that I chose to connect in uh, H3374 I chose it from this particular uh, Bible verse. And if you can read that, please. And Abraham said, Because I thought, Surely the fear of God is not in this place, and they, they will slay me for my wife's sake. Okay, that is where I got this uh, particular uh, word fear from. Now, Abraham was in a very awkward situation, and the pressure was on him. All right, now he was using the fear of God in a positive context. He was saying, Surely these people do not fear God. Because if Abraham believed that these people that he was coming into contact feared God, he would no longer worry about the safety of himself or the safety of his wife. So he was saying, that if these people feared God, he would be able to trust them. And I'm going to tell you that we as Christians need to be very, very cautious in who we allow our, our person to do business with. See, if you are going into business with someone that you know does not fear God, now that makes you vulnerable to that person because you know that you and I fear God, but if they don't fear God, now we're not fighting or playing by the same rules where you are obligated to be honest, where you are obligated to be moral and respectful, where you are obligated to be selfless, where you're obligated to put the best interest of others beyond your own self, they're not. Even though they'll have to give an account for everything, but they don't know it, or they don't accept it, or they don't believe it. So that gives them an insanity to be free from those obligations in their own mind. Not in reality, but in their own mind. So therefore, we come into a contract or an agreement with them, we don't know how they're going to do us. And in fact, it might even be wise for you to expect the worst from them. And if you do get into business with them and they do treat you good, call that the mercy of God. But if they treat you bad, call that just what happens when someone doesn't fear God. So Abraham was saying, I cannot trust these people. And I certainly can't trust them. They will kill me to receive my wife. But I'm going to tell you, just as Abraham was indirectly proclaiming to have the fear of God by himself by assuming they didn't have the fear of God. Abraham, in reality, regardless of what was coming out of his mouth, at that point in time, 
He was fearing man more than he was fearing God. Yeah, he said the right things, but in reality, you can see that he was actually fearing the consequences from the hands of man rather than fearing God by lying to them and by saying that these people will kill my wife. Now, do you believe God would have allowed that to happen at that particular time? No. Why not? Because God had plans for Abraham and his wife to bring forth the lineage, the seed, the manifestation of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we know that God promised Abraham that he would be a father of many nations. And that's how we know that at that point in time, Abraham was fearing man more than he was fearing God. And with that being said, is God more concerned about the words coming out of our, our mouth than he is the words coming out of our heart? Because on the flip side, you have people that are proclaiming that they don't love God. You have people that are proclaiming that they don't love church. But God is looking past the words that are coming out of our mouth and looking at what's really in our heart. Because there are people on this earth that are proclaiming that they're not Christians, but God is looking at their heart. Jesus said, who did the will of my father? Him that said I will go and didn't go, or him that said I will not go, but actually went. God is looking past our words. Our words are often going to sound sweet to the ears. We say all the right things, but God is, wants to look at what's in our heart. Are we saying the right things in our heart? Now, does God still have mercy on us even when we're, our heart is not right like he did with Abraham? He did. Even Abraham was fearing man more than God at that particular situation. God had mercy on him. God had favor on him. Because somewhere down the line, God knew that Abraham was going to be willing to sacrifice his son, his only son that he loved the most for his love, for Jehovah, for God, which was symbolic for our father sacrificing his only begotten son for us, proving how much he really did love. And I'm going to say this, and this is just a down-to-earth uh, perspective down-to-earth truth. If we are in the process of discovering the fear of the Lord, but we don't yet have, we have not yet obtained the fear of the Lord, then on a continual basis in dealing with other people, we are going to be hypersensitive to those around us in a negative context in which everything that happens to us, we are going to take it personal. Our perception is going to assume that everywhere we go, people are against us. Everywhere we go, people are talking against us. When someone laughs, it's because they were laughing at you. When we do not yet have the fear of the Lord, we are going to take everything personal and take nothing spiritual. When we don't have the fear of the Lord, we are going to have negative thinking and assuming that people are against us. And we are going to be overly sensitive in the areas that we should not be. And in the areas that we should be hypersensitive towards uh, being concerned about the needs of others, we won't be. So we'll be sensitive in areas where we shouldn't be and where the areas that we should be sensitive will be numb, oblivious to it. We'll be oblivious to the needs of those around us. And so this is a problem with those that don't have the fear of the Lord. This is why we all desperately need to discover the fear of the Lord. If you don't have it, say, God, please, Father God, I beg you in the name of Jesus Christ, reestablish or establish the fear of the Lord and show me what it truly is to respect you, to reverence you. 
You know, some people will put Jesus in their own mind. They will say that if Jesus was around, they'll have Jesus listening to rap music. They'll have Jesus in a car with hydraulics bumping down the street. And they'll have Jesus with speakers just rattling. And, and they'll put a gold tooth in Jesus. And they'll make a gospel that is not true. You know, if you read the Bible and you can't imagine Jesus doing those things, then why do you live like that? Because you're disrespecting uh, yourself and you're disrespecting who you're supposed to be representing. We should put our best foot forward to God. And not without being fake, with being real. We should come to God with our best. You know, even in the way that we dress, not that if we dress a certain way, that means we're truly godly or Christian, but if you were to go on a date with someone that you reverence or respected or you were attracted to, would you not put your best foot forward for that date? Or would you purposely go through your wardrobe and find the uh, most sleaziest, uh, ripped up, holy garbage? No. You would go and try to find the best thing that you have to present to a woman. Now, we in the natural, in the flesh, will do that for a woman. How much more should we do for God in the way that we carry ourselves, in the way that we love, and the way that we demonstrate? We should go all out for God. Nothing is too great for God. Nothing. Even the woman that, that, that the world said, you're wasting the perfume on his feet. You could have sold that for the poor. Jesus said, you'll always have the poor with you, but you won't always have, we, we, you won't always have me with you. Okay, so when those Christians or those non-Christians do not have the fear of the Lord, they will misinterpret others. They will misunderstand others. They will assume negative things that may not be true. Let me give you an example. There was a particular day and a particular year at a particular location where God pressed upon my heart to voluntarily clean up the area where I was living at that particular time. And I was picking up the cans that my beloved neighbors had threw on the ground. And one of the particular cans that someone threw on the ground happened to be an empty beer can. And so as I went over to pick up the empty beer can, someone caught me at the perfect time and they saw me grabbing an empty beer can. They didn't see me picking up all the other garbage, they just saw me picking up a beer can. And don't you know, you could feel the accusation. Look at him walking around with an empty beer can. As a person or human being that doesn't hold the fear of the Lord, we will not have discernment. We won't have discernment to be able to accurately look past what we see in the natural. And we will lose the ability to accurately judge truth from lies. In Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10, it says, Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. And there you have it. So when we fear God, we will start to have understanding. When we fear God, we will have the gift of discernment. When we fear God, we will understand things that go beyond the natural or it will go beyond the logic. And this is what happens. When we fear God, we will obtain wisdom. And wisdom is stimulated or produced by knowledge of potential consequences for the future. <laughs> 